You know, it feels like the Educational Institute was probably the thing that was holding the show back. Because once when they defeated Smiley and all that stuff, and we're only two episodes in after that arc, so far the show has been really good. Almost if they should have kept the Educational Institution arc a bit short. Sub so six episodes make it four or something. But either way, it, I don't know. But either way, it causes the show to feel better than what before, you know? It's like being dragged out or being stalled or anything like that. It feels like things are actually happening in a way. So, it makes you wonder. So, the first half is, is like a slow burn. It has its good parts. It has its merits. I'm not going to lie. But so far, the first two episodes after the Educational Institute art, it feels a lot better than it was before. Really enjoying it. Character development, world building, the, the scenes, you know, before then, it was just like just going on endless desert and um, chases and stuff like that, and that was it. It just felt very Mad Max-like, which in a way was interesting, but now I feel like the scenery's changing up bit by bit. You know, from exploring an underground library, seeing the philosophy of a library-keeping robot, to now exploring a very dangerous, hard-to-survive area of Earth, the Iron Sea itself, looking for um, adult material to help out in the conquest. And a lot to really unravel, from Monica's development to the secrets of the past of Empress, and to this entire area, this dangerous area of the pack that you can, there's other anime and shows I've seen where you fall into a sea or something and you won't survive in it. A lot of shows that have that, actually. So this isn't the first one, but this one has such liveliness in it. Kind of reminds me of um, Monoka, The Valley of the Wind, or Nausicaa. I think it's called Nausicaa. That old Gilly movie where the insects take over and stuff. Instead of always seeing robots and stuff, we're seeing insects and these gigantes, these cube like creatures, like cubes, squid cubes in a way, <laughs> that feed off each other on a habitat. The, the, the iron sea creatures fly around like buzzards or probably mosquitoes or something, and then you have the the gigantes feeding off of them in a way. And then you have this ship that's pioneered by this girl named Asana and she uses the ship the sky as a reef. And since the sky is a reef, the other things avoid it unless you make gunfire sounds. You will be safe. You know, it's just very interesting. The dubs are still the subs are still a mess, by the way. It's like every now and then you'll get good subs, but most of the time you get some very bad subs, but I, I don't mind the subs. People actually are not minus the subs. I know when the, the show first started, everyone hated the subs, and people still do, but um, now thanks to what's been going on, people kind of like the subs. It's like it's a part of the show itself. <laughs> so even when the good subs come out, people are like, I don't say to these old subs, because you know, they just feel, they just feel right with the show. For some reason, it feels right. I don't know why, it just does. Well, anyways, um, uh, let's talk about Monica and how she was and how she is. She seems to be a girl that's only out for herself and the value of money. I don't see what a person would want with money in this kind of world where it's all about survival. Because even when you do seem to have the money, you still seem to be working your butt off just to survive. I understand in our world right now, if you have a lot of money, you live a life of luxury. Especially when resources are going low and gas prices are high. Having money will be a giant luxury. Luxury. <laughs> Jeez. That word was fighting to get out of my mouth. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but in her world, is you know, batteries in a way. Tons and tons of batteries. So she's obsessed with finding money. And you see her pass with Asana and Monica, I guess. Something happened. I guess I like how they didn't tell everything that happened, but only show bits and pieces. You know, how Monica was always Monica. How she always would just read, study, you know, the opposite of the effect of having fun. She's an interesting character, but she doesn't really like danger. She just goes where the money's going. But... Just like get yourself involved in crazy situations. Seeing even at the bar was saying, What are you guys gonna do? Where Empress wants to find the lighthouse eight. Um 
Dead Master follows after this, and of course, Strength wants to fight Lunatic, so everyone has their crazy desires. Where Lunatic, where Monica just wants to survive and make money. She knows in order to make the money, you gotta go to the dangerous places, because that's where all the rare materials are at. So she sees her former flame and doesn't know how to feel about it. You know, she's like, okay, you know. And this is how you do a good LGBT character in anime. Like I said, anime and manga always had LGBT characters in their stories since the 80s, people. Probably further than that. But if they, the difference between them and America is that they don't stab it in your face. You know, it's just part of their character. You know, but they it's like a dimension I'm gay, dimension I'm bi, what it is in today's various things, which is weird. I know I'm side vexing here, but I always do that, which is weird because in the past with American characters on American shows, when they introduced someone gay, that was it. You know, they still had a personality, they still had characteristics that people didn't complain about. You know, there always been gay characters in American shows, but the problem was that it was natural. But now, in today's standards, it feels like, it just feels, you know, different. For Stan, they won't, that's the only thing that they have going for them, is their sexuality. Which kind of sucks, because in the past, I guess past writers left the studios, and now new writers can't write for crap. Most these shows, I guess. But I'm getting sidetracked again, as usual. But anyways, capturing this thing... Some people are arguing whether the thing that they needed, whether it was part of testicles or part of ovaries. I don't know. The way it's designed, if you look at the design, I guess, um, it could be testicles, but some are arguing it was ovaries. <laughs> but then, then, and then it goes back to the question, like, this show really evolves around sex a lot, doesn't it? They're even talking about on the ship and stuff, you know? <laughs> like, guess that's just Black Rock Shooter all together. Now... It's nice to see some of the other fleshed out characters like Dead Master is afraid of insects. Like she's just freaking out, man. Just shooting it, man. She cannot stand insects, man. And usually in anime, I love it when characters can't stand insects. They're always funny. And I think the best character to hate insects was Misty from Pokemon. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was funny. Especially back in the early 2000s, so I made the music video about Celebi. No, not Celebi, but Cal Cat. Keller P. Yeah, Keller P. <laughs> I miss you. Just hated that thing. <laughs> oh, they were good times. Now, they got the egg and Empress absorbed the core of that, where the heck that thing was. Adult material, I guess. And she advanced, I guess, or she was doing too much of the energy at once that caused her to pass out. But she was able to create a force field around it. But yeah, I am very interested in the Iron Sea a lot. Especially how the whatever the heck it is. It spills. It spills. It can even, you know, damage metal. You know, hard steel so quickly. That's, ooh, that's a dangerous place to be in. And of course, the ecosystem, man. Like, we only saw a glimpse of the ecosystem of this place. But I was already fascinated with it. And stuff, you know, the episode really was eye catching in a way. Seeing the colors of gray, but yet other like lightish dark purples and blues just being formed around, like you're seeing the Solaris at the Atlantic in a way. It was really nice to look at and seeing how the Gigantics weren't really dead, but it was just, I guess, yeah, I don't know if it's a living organic material creature. I don't know, a lot of mysteries should need to be up, on, up about this crazy world that Black Rock Shooter lives in, you know. I think of all, of all the worlds, this one has to have the most fascinating, you know. It's not an alien evasion, it's not the dream world, or it's not the underworld. It's a world that's being fused with science fiction, with AIs and different evolved creatures. So I'm very fascinated with this world itself, and hopefully we see more things like jungle aspects, snow, even lava, you know, so different things, different creatures in their habitat, and how people have to adapt and survive in certain areas. That will be nice to see. So anyway, with that, I will end this video. I really enjoyed this episode, I hope you guys did too. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon. This has been background on anime. Signing out.